it's Sunday morning, and that means... Well, another average week this past week here at Backyard Tech. Not a lot really to write home about. As always, we'll look at the week in review. We'll look at what's on the cards for the week ahead, middle part of this week's vlog. You already know what I'm going to talk about. All that and whatever else comes to mind, coming up. This is the Backyard Tech Vlog. Hey, how's it going? Thank you for tuning in. It is Sunday. It is vlog time again, as always, here at the Backyard Tech channel. And, well, an average week. Only just. About that just. <laughs> it's, uh... Jeez, I'll tell you what, we're living in some weird and wacky times, aren't we? It's, uh... Just gone 20 to 8 in the morning here. And before we get into the rest of this week's vlog... Now, normally, we'd talk about going out last night on the slops and terps and feeling a little less than compass mentis and human, but let's face it, the restrictions we're under at the moment, for some places, you can't go out and get on the slops and terps unless you've got on it at home. But any which way, there's only one way to start a Sunday morning. Coffee time. Oh. Even I need that this morning. I've got to say, I really feel like I, I, I went out. I went out last night. I've got that real, not in the guts. I've got that sort of feeling in the head of, did I actually go out and get on the slops and terps last night? I'm slower on the uptake factor than usual this morning, which means, well, the day's the write off then, really, isn't it? Let's face it. All righty, let's um. Let's jump into the week in review, and uh, like I said, there isn't much really to write home about, unfortunately. Now, because I haven't got a lot out, some of last week's videos are showing up. Um, we kicked it off with a It's Monday promo. We then uh, continued resurrecting my V490 with a surprising result. It came up. Unexpectedly, I was expecting it to still do what it's been doing, but I added a separate keyboard, mouse, and screen, and she came up. We had Monday's convo, we had the Tuesday promo. If I can get the damn mouse to grab properly, uh, we had tech news today about the Western Australian data breach and a 15 year old kid involved, and s some of it was from here in Victoria. No wonder the rest of the country's laughing at us. Shows you how good our data security is here. If someone in WA can leak data connected back to Victoria, probably send it all over to China. We uh, we took a look at Paul Turner's HBX Debian 3.1. I've got to say, it wasn't a bad little operating system. We had Tuesday's promo. We had the midweek update. I said there wasn't much going on. We had Wednesday's convo, because Wednesday was a write-off for me. Thursday, we had the Thursday promo. We then, Paul Turner got out a HBX Debian 3 resurrection, which I think he nailed it. No kidding. Um, you know, Paul's good at this. He releases something, you test it, and he, you, you know, you might find something he overlooked, or... He's let it go and then come back to the operating system 24, 36 hours later and gone, uh-oh. So HBX Debian 3 Resurrection, my opinion is he nailed it. Now, there's probably a lot of people out there who disagree with me. In fact, nine times out of ten, everyone disagrees with me, but that's a different story. Um, we then uh, did, uh, well, part five of resurrecting the V490. It was a no-go fail. We had Thursday's Convo, Friday, uh, we had the Friday Promo, we had a Tech Acquisitions um, video, still want to have a look at that laptop at some stage too, and see if I can't get those UFIs up and running. Uh, part 6 of resurrecting my V490, we made some progress, but I'm still having a lot of bugs to iron out. We had... Friday's Convo. Yesterday, got four videos out. We had the weekend promo for Saturday. 
We had a Q&A and advice video, um, hard limiting versus normalization. <sighs> I've got a follow-up video to that because, uh, well, the same person who's clearly doesn't get it. I need to show him what hard limiting is. Don't ask. I don't know. I thought I explained it perfectly, but he's going, I don't know what you mean by hard limit. If you watch this channel, you know Pro Audio. Because I know Pro Audio. I've been doing Pro Audio for 34 years. I find it very difficult people don't get the difference. If I know it, everyone knows it. Um... We then had that opening that UPS up from yesterday to see what happened. I think you can pretty much say the power surge cooked the battery. Haven't found another battery yet. I've got one somewhere. I just don't know where I've put it. I'm going to find that. Uh, we had the R7 R730 Automate Challenge restart. Still going after 15 days. So definitely beat 11 days. Using Falcon is much better for that than Firefox. Because we, we barely got seven days out of Firefox and a, you know, P15S off. And uh, as usual, last night's Convo didn't publish. So, five videos yesterday, still not a, a good Saturday, but at least I got some stuff out. It's uh, the V490's taking most of my time to get it going. Um... I dread to think if I get the e-server going, what I'm going to have to do to get that going. I've got a horrible feeling, a really horrible feeling I'm going to have to get into bloody VX Works and try and see what's going on in the back end of the RTOS. Remembering, it's version 47. It's non-upgradable to 50-something, whatever we're up to now with VX Works. Um... I'm going to have to stop it booting. You've got to be real fast stopping VX Works to boot. Trust me. But anyway, so there we are. There's the week in review. Not a fantastic week, let's face it. But hey, at least I've got some videos out for the week. Even if it wasn't quality. Now... Oh, I forgot to... Hang on. We did forget one little thing, didn't we? I got... Uh, two videos out on the other channel yesterday. This week, too. Um, Monday's rant. We got Monday's rant out. And then yesterday, or Friday, I had a couple of rants about a couple of things. And for those that haven't seen that, I'm going to touch on one topic today as well. There we are. I knew I'd forgotten to do the other channel. Okay. Now, um, things are getting worse back home in Melbourne, I've got to tell you. The fact that Andrews has brought in the feds to look after a couple of nursing homes in Melbourne, personally, I think it's an admission of guilt on his behalf because he stuffed the system. I know where the other half works. They're really, really, really taking this to the nth degree with infection control and everything. They are really taking it to the nth degree. Um, you know, in some cases, borderline hazmat suits are being worn, which is taking, you know, that's really taking infection control to the, to the max, basically. Um, but the feds have taken over two of two or three of Melbourne's worst nursing homes. Um, Country Victoria is fed up with Andrews to the point where some country towns are taking their own isolation precautions and other things too because he doesn't seem too worried about uh, uh, regional Victoria. I think in his eyes, regional Victoria is like, you guys can, you fuckers can fend for yourselves. I don't care. I'm more worried about my socialist labor base in Melbourne. <coughs> so 
So things are getting uglier. Um, we're starting to see a rise here in Geelong, which is concerning, obviously for the other half and myself. Um, he fucked up and he won't admit it. He will not admit it. Only because Daniel Andrews doesn't know how to say sorry and certainly doesn't doesn't admit to ever being wrong. Sounds like a Chinese dictator, doesn't he? <laughs> Although, as I keep saying, if the rumours are true, Daniel Andrews has put Australia's sovereign security at risk by discussing state secrets with China. I think WA's done the same thing, unfortunately. But that just shows you, you can't trust them. Considering Daniel Andrews uses TikTok from the Chinese server as a bonus. And hopefully the government, the Fed, say that TikTok's national security and they can't actually, Andrews can't use it anymore. So things are getting messy back home and worse. I'm just hoping that regional Victoria can continue doing what it's doing. Now, the other thing too, I mentioned this over on my other channel on Friday. I'm going to mention it again. I, get, I am getting comments on the V490 video. I'm not publishing them. And the reason I'm not publishing them is I'm not willing to give people fodder regarding the V490. Three times I've had rants here at Backyard Tech slash Backyard IT going way back about Linux and the fact that specifically Spark Risk CPUs, specifically, not ARM, not PowerPC, Spark, okay? These idiots out there who, who make this inaccurate assumption that Linux works across the board need their heads read. Especially some of the uh, younger ones who are clearly inept in their computer history. Linux does not work on every single solitary processor architecture under the sun. It doesn't. Those servers I have, even when Oracle Linux came out, it did not come out for Sun4U. Oracle had released it on the x86 platform loosely based on Red Hat. The number of idiots I get who are saying, I'll oh, put Linux on it. Either don't know Sun for you, don't know their computer history, or make the stupid assumption that Linux runs on every single processor architecture under the sun. Now, Linux has fantastic backwards compatibility on the x86-64 platform, okay? Both Intel and AMD. And some of the older Linuxes that are out there that are still developed now will work even going back to P4 or further. And Ubuntu is a, is a case in point. But the number of people and I, I threatened this over on the other channel. Okay? In, fr I think it was Friday's rant. Right? If I keep being told to install Linux onto my V490, I will instantaneously stop all videos about it. Okay? They are a... Unix server only. 
Now, there has been trials and tribulations regarding getting some Linuxes, like Debian's Ultra Linux, did work on a, sporadically worked on a couple of Sun machines and some PowerPC. But PowerPC and Spark, while they are both RISC, are different CPUs. Okay. Last night, because I read the comments this morning from Friday's installation of, when was it Friday or yesterday? Might have been yesterday. Sorry, Friday. Of getting OpenSX CE 2014.05 installed. And they're like, why don't you just put Linux on it? If I know you can't put Linux onto a Sun server, I'm not the only one in the world. Now, I've been playing with Sun hardware, U2s, UE2s, um, v, V110s, V240s, V280s, V440s, 480s, 880s, 90s, 490s, okay? I've never once got Linux to install on any of them. None of them. I've always ended up with a kernel panic. Natively, Sun Microsystems servers, and to some extent, desktops, run Solaris natively. Now, yes, OpenBSD is compatible on Sun4U to a point, FreeBSD, again, to a point, it is compatible on a V490. But why would you install Linux when a Sun Microsystem server is optimized for Solaris? Now, a couple of people who I can trust, sort of, know what I'm up to. I, I, as I said, I mentioned it over on, in Friday's rant over at Backyard's non-tech channel about the fact of I am this close to not making any more videos on the Sun stuff because the number of idiots out there who say, I'll just put Linux on it, either don't know Sun, which is surprising because I do, or are stupid enough to think that Linux is completely cross-platform Compatible. If Oracle wanted Sun for you, and you got to remember, Oracle wiped out Sun Microsystems 10, 11 years ago, completely. 10 years ago. When Oracle released Oracle Linux back in 2004, it was x86. They ran x86 Oracle Linux and Solaris for Spark. So I'm not publishing Linux comments. I used to cop it with the E49, put Linux on it. It doesn't run bloody Linux. Clarification, there are some Linuxes that run on newer Spark architecture but not all. You know, the E49 kernel panics, even when I managed to get, I got from somewhere, I don't exactly remember where I got it, but I did manage to get Ultra Linux, which is Debian's Ultra Linux. It panicked. Because... Spark V9 is not necessarily Linux compatible. There are some Spark CPUs that it does work on. Um, but I've never got any Linux or any apparent compatible Linux to work on my sons. <coughs> so I'm fed up with people saying put Linux on it. You guys are fools. You, you, you really have no idea. 
like I said, I've mentioned this before. I was introduced to Solaris on a U2, on an Ultra Enterprise, or Ultra 2. Well, Ultra 2 and Ultra Enterprise 2 are exactly the same machine, just one's a server, one's a desktop. I mean, it's not that hard to turn a UE2 into a desktop. You just put an SBUS frame buffer in it. We all know that. You know, you, an, Ultra, an Ultra Enterprise 2, by definition, without a frame buffer, is basically a server. You put a frame buffer in it, and you can turn it, it into a desktop PC. Whereas an Ultra 2 is, by definition, just a desktop PC. You can turn it into a server if you want, but it, it, that's the deal. So I got introduced to Sun Hardware as an Ultra 2. The big beige box Sun Ultra 2 with a freaking GDM monitor. Right? Now that was SBUS. Which, as we know, SBUS looks very similar to that of SCSI. It's not SCSI, but the, 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 the interface of an SBUS card looks very similar to SCSI. Similar, not the same. Now, if I know this, how come there are people out there that can't tell the damn difference between Spark and other RISC CPUs and CISC? I mean, why would you run Linux on a server that natively is tuned up and optimised to run Solaris? That, that's like putting... Macos for um, you know, it would be like putting if you could it would be like putting Erix onto a CISC system Erix runs natively on MIPS based RISC architecture and yet you get idiots saying oh just put Linux on it how come I know Linux doesn't work on it because I knew Linux never worked on it. So, as I said, this close to stopping all V490 videos again. Because I'm sick of people telling me to put Linux on the bloody thing. Either they have no idea about Sun Microsystems, or they're dumb enough to think that Linux works on everything. Take your pick. Anyway, now, um, this week ahead. I have no idea. I haven't even thought about the, the week ahead. I have no idea. <laughs> um, I'll think of something. Guaranteed I'll think of something. I just haven't thought of anything at the moment, which is a little weird. No, I haven't. I haven't thought of anything yet. <laughs> um, obviously, the convos, daily promos. Hopefully, we can finish off the V490 resurrection this coming week. Um, I think that's about it. It's about all I can think of. Uh, maybe try and see if we can't get some of that ubiquity, ubiquity stuff working. That'd be handy. Uh, I'm trying to think what else there is. Yeah, that's about it. Um, want to have a look at that laptop too. Want to see what that that Toshiba laptop's all about. But I think that's probably probably about it. I don't exactly have. No, I don't actually. I haven't actually thought about all that's on this week. Um, probably some operating system reviews. We'll have tech news today at some stage. Videos over on the other channel. Um, geez, I love having that channel to let fly on sh stuff. It's really good. Um, that'll be about it, I reckon. I'm still trying to get KX Linux set up on the big Mac and, and Debian on the little Mac and all this other stuff, and I'm just running out of time on everything. Guaranteed, though, life gets in my way this coming week. I'll guarantee it. But there we go. Anyway, there's the vlog for this week, guys. Um, 
as I mentioned in the Sunday promo uploaded earlier, we'll try and see if we can't get some V490 stuff out today. Um, maybe. We'll see how things go. There we are. Anyway, if you're planning on stumping up in front of the couch all day, or on the stumping up in front of the couch, that ain't going to work. On the couch in front of the TV all day, I'll support you. Anyway, have a good Sunday. See ya.